done, one good is one chance to learn by doing. But how do you do it safely where there's very little cost of failure? That's the ideal uh, way to do it. So with, with the CAA, yeah, we got a, a pretty much a, a new opportunity that probably didn't exist too much before. So we had these things in our head, but um, most importantly, the folks at the uh, National State State Engineering Director had it in their head as well. And they said, hey, let's create a, uh, a set of course materials and at the university level uh, where we can let students learn by doing. Because um, students have got some software development exposure, but let's start illustrating how to use the application uh, source. And you can focus on CSS application development. You just don't need everyone to begin to forget about how CSS and those sound skills can come together. Application developers. That's where the biggest growth is going to occur. I mean, we're talking about a lot of platforms and stuff here this morning, but where really we get into the, the payback is having folks out there who can come up with good quality materials for the application. <coughs> so, how do you do that? Well, Firefly software is a development process. You want to test like you fly and you want to fly like you test. So, how do you do that quite promptly? Usually, you get in there with an a, a integrated um, simulation environment where you have a six stop sim, a vehicle, some of the effectors, what have you. You have that possibility again with a different project uh, that started out as a uh, job in the 20 years ago, a trick simulation environment, and that's also going to be you know, open source. You can go and take NASA open source agreement and use that. Um, if you were to take two and we have put them together, then you can actually simulate your vehicle uh, with four flight software, everything in the loop, uh, safely without crashing what we usually learn about a vehicle. If you were to find a way to use the same command and function controls between test and flight and then pack it all together, now you've got the basics of something that students can get their hands on. Make it interesting, you can make it usable. If you make it representative, that's the goal, right? To provide that educational benefit, but then you have to make it available. So the approach that we're going with is to create a, a single um, Linux virtual machine gas unit. Uh, use existing open source products like uh, CSE, CSS, Post Island CSP products we've been talking about here, but there's a whole raft of open source products out there. We would craft the many hands-on tutorials that would be some specific applications for the outreach and the uh, simulation model. The user would have a laptop and then they show up with a uh, uh, AR drone quadcopter. And we would run CSS on the quadcopter as we can run CSS on the vehicle. So some of the components, uh, let's go down the list pretty quick. You got here, you can read the chart, but all these things exist already in open source land out there in the industry. Um, not really industry, it's open source, is it? So there's a lot of CS software that's free, it's open source. Um, and NASA World is going to use a lot of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and their SOS variant. Uh, and run through your just home. Um, you can create a control digest image just like we run in the industry. Um, for CSS, we can use the Linux Posits, Post Island, CSP uh, as open source. Uh, we can use Trix, which is open source on GitHub and create a generic uh, quadcopter drone sim from that. We've got the open source tool chain for 64-bit, 32-bit Linux, and we've got ARM cost compiler tool chain, which is all open source, easily done. And this is a development environment, and the reason we're looking at this is because not only can you use it for C++ development, everything, the whole life cycle, editing, bugging, building, profiling, there's more of plugins than I have any time to go into here. But you can, we definitely do use it for CSS and simulation development already, like you know, other folks in that space too. It's that Eclipse is a modular plugin framework. So if you want to bring the missing piece uh, that's not open source yet, we can use Eclipse plugins and even prototyping some of that, which I'll see screenshots later. But that would just be handing in some entry and some flight control of the drone, but that's give you a way to interact with CSS. And you can package and use when you're testing in your trick simulated environment and when you're actually flying in the system. For navigation, there's plenty of options, but one thing that we're thinking about is why not go ahead and use something that someone would actually use for a flat top development project. Uh, on Battlefish, you're using track. Why use track here for the uh, course documentation? It gives you the wiki for the courses. It gives you the issue tracking. It is with the Firefox browser, the default open source browser for the OS. Uh, that's a course material where a wiki page is nothing to use a modifiable clicker. User wants to make notes while they're going through the coursework. It's right there, and at the end, if they completely goof something up, they either continue on the copy and they can start over. And that's the wiki. So, pretty, pretty easy to use. So, we're looking at this uh, Air Drone 2.0 made by Terex SA. This is a commercially available fly copter. I think it retails for $21, bucks and $300. Um, this ARM Cortex A, it's uh, running Linux natively. Wi Fi, two cameras, gyro, magnetometer, a um, couple of output sensors. It's a pretty capable little platform. 
the important thing is here is that we're trying to set uh, CSS application development. We're not trying to get into the GNC engineer. We don't want to go in and start reverse engineering somebody's uh, clinical process. That's not the point. The nice about this platform is we don't have to do anything like that. We don't have to reverse engineer anything. We use the existing uh, UDP socket uh, interface that I described in our SDK. And CSS will push and pull on that UDP interface. So we keep the scope to writing CSS applications, exploring why we use CSS in certain ways to approach the flight software paradigm. Now, obviously, we're running new code on this platform, so it's not going to work on the manufacturer. You're going to avoid the warranty, but we expect that folks who are receiving this will understand that and work accordingly. So for current status, we have a VM, as you can see on the board. Um, we have a VM connecting to the drone already. Uh, CSS, the, the CSS paths that are specific to controlling the drone we run inside the VM desk on Linux. We run it inside the trick simulation. We run it uh, with the uh, on Linux, and we put the drone in the loop that we communicate by Wi-Fi or GNC. So that's a, that's a sort of a hardware loop, and then we can cross compile and repost the app onto the ARM Linux platform, onto the PC x86 Linux platform. Now we actually got the the, the apps running on the drone. Should be the same CSS interfaces and the same uh, and so some of these displays that we've been prototyping, um, we've been able to do this back for the full life cycle, moving from one step to the next, and next to the same third step. And so to expand on this is a prototyping effort we're looking into uh, at Odyssey, and we're hoping to leverage this to for this uh, educational outreach effort. This is one display example. Uh, this is a drone. Uh, this is a real HUD. It updates with the nav data coming off the drone. You've got compass patterns on the top, rising indicator, uh, elevation. Altitude on the right, but on the right panel, uh, you've got a, a, a mix of uh, CSS telemetry and CSS commands that you need to make. No op, uh, counter reset, and on you've got uh, live CSS event messages coming out. And you can plan, you might read that it's CD version 6400, etc. You can see these things highlighting. Another way that we've got is a prototype with a different widget set and a different uh, back end for the process. Expanding the telemetry. Bottom left, you've still got the event log. Uh, you've got styles, graphs, and you've got telemetry data for the command and the CSS version, profile version, system log. So, working on these displays right now, and we're looking at different options, and hopefully, we'll come up with a cohesive set between these sets and, and other pieces of uh, displays that uh, we can pull together. And CSS is usually something that is realistic, but it's very practical and very easy. So current testers, we're still working on the tutorial. I mean, this would take a lot of tool development to get profile, CSV, trick, sim, everything all working. But then what do you do with that tool set? That's when you start talking about what are the course, what are the courses that you want to direct to the student, what lessons you want them to learn, and that's even more fun. We're working on that. A lot of necessary support documentation we've been capturing and using this up here, but you just can't say, here's a VM, go for it. You actually want to be able to Hold the hands of the students and help them over the things that are going to help them spin their wheels and, and take. You don't want them lagging in some networking issue when you really want them to be concentrating on the CSS program. Um, on the VM itself, uh, since this since the package itself is going to be a VM, this isn't the same. This isn't quite the same thing as patching software. We're patching an op entire operating system. And for there's a lot of open source solutions for doing that. Uh, and currently, we've got a recipe using Git, Vagrant, uh, VirtualBox, and Jenkins. And my personal goal is to get to the point where we can do continuous development, uh, where somebody checks something in as we are working on it. They go through, build up the entire OS, sanitizes it, packages it, and then we can get to ask the testers in the form that the actual users would receive. They can test the installation process on their laptop and then go through the coursework and make sure it works. And the nice thing would be is that we can put some hooks in there to actually run unit tests and build scripts and things inside the VM. And the automation part is not that hard to do. It just takes recognition from you to do it, and that'll be a big time saver down the road. So that's the current idea. Future work, this is still ongoing. Um, we've got the complete development and test environment. Uh, the sim needs to be finished up. The displays need to be finished up. And the CFS, they're rough. They need a little more polish. So we're working on them right now. Uh, 
uh, it's quite much open to completed and we're refining the type in process and we would have a um, good mechanism for the user succession. <coughs> we were really shooting to try and have this out in the neighborhood of 2016, question mark. I don't keep up with this process because there's a lot of things about it, but we're going to be on the target um, for the next few months up through 2016. So uh, NASA, JSC, and us, we've got a good incentive to get this out because I think a lot of people are going to appreciate it. So, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Dr. Lori Pocock for uh, pushing forward on the um, education outreach effort and also providing the funds to do this. Very and uh, David Holmes for uh, asking to be here today. And uh, to recommend that not only is there a large audience here today um, in person and on the phone to support CSS, but simulation environment also has quite a few people for this as well. And it's only by uh, open sourcing the uh, products and everything related to them can you construct possibly. So um, so have you, I mean, I know you said university level. Have you actually tried to collaborate with any universities or taking over? Uh, or is this more of a, a standalone product? That I, I'm collecting a list of, of universities. I think I have a list of four or five at this point. Yeah, I can't remember uh, what all I have in the list. But a couple of the technicals. Um, okay. You know, I have a few universities just kind of waiting. And, and as people, as they do these talks like this, I generally been getting written up. Well, yeah, we did. We like it more. You know, so yeah. I, I have a list, so when we have it, it'll, I think it'll look like every time. I want to talk about the displays or the command system. I'm a tree. Have you used the latest CSC releases with their Python script to display the data? I didn't know it was maybe a good open source alternative to uh, telemetry and command. I've used the uh, version that came out earlier this year for Python script. Um, they're good for doing these simple commands. They're totally inadequate for doing anything with them. So I might be able to show up those launch and then after that, I'm carrying around the screen with a mouse and a click. And I hope I don't misclick. I don't want this thing to crash. I want to tell Dan that I've got to click the right button. That's a pretty difficult problem. Now, the other thing is the command
So we would kind of um, we would give this uh, as a package, like on, on a stick or something, to the instructor, and he'd basically be pointed to his class. Not really line. They would kind of, kind of do whatever project it would be a and how long they want to spend on it. Um, then we also have the other issue of training new users who are like student based, but you know, there's this whole new user thing, and we have a VM for that that who knows could, could be put on the whole time. But that's another thing. We haven't, we haven't just, here's the kind of, you know, having that around. Um, I don't know if maybe going through an online effort, you know, might be interesting. Do you have something publicly available? Not only new user training, but new users. This is also useful for, yeah, not just educational outreach, but for training. Uh, you know, as an example, we can, we can go from you adding a line of code actually. In real time, in the same interface, we can support why you're adding certain lines of code right now. We can support why uh, we put a convention and repeating in that. So it's not then, it, it, you know, it's, it's not just the phone software, the internet system as a whole. So you can see how all this stuff then affects the whole. In fact, from the view of all the way down to all the way down. Yeah, I just got one. Uh, what level did you integrate Trix? Was that a CFS app? Um, where what a connection made? Uh, uh, what level did you integrate Trix into the into the CFS? Yeah, the way it's integrated right now is it's over GCP buckets. And so we have an advantage in this case. It's not like the standard white software where white software you can put all the hardware interface. In this case, uh, we're going to be publicly available the CSS apps that are involved with direct communication vehicle are actually publishing and, and creating uh, new tasks into new tasks. So that's fine because we're not trying to make a space qualified flight vehicle here. We're trying to show this and then flight software code. So the nice thing is because it avoids a really nasty issues and stuff that you usually have to do with flight software. But there's only so much you really want to cram into one thing here. And so I think we've got a good solution here. From the point of view of, of, uh, of the flight software, it's still uh, and then we don't have to look at that. Yeah. Uh, the goal here is to. And I was saying that actually gives us a chance to take the, the CFS apps running in Linux, take a sim, take the sim out, replace it with real programmatic hardware, but this is still running in Linux. It doesn't know any different. This is all UDP. And then you do have this over onto the drone. It still doesn't know any different. So, so it's, it's a nice way to step through the process. And it makes, really, it makes things a lot easier, I think, in the long run. Um, you get a chance to introduce this is a Matt Dennis.